Hi everybody, welcome back. We're now in the first DAW assignment. And really all we're looking for is if you can upload a screenshot for us. And I've got the loops here. I'll be able to note you know, what you've put together and I can easily audition them on my own side here. But the most important thing that we look at here is, is that we're gonna create four tracks and we'll try to clearly label them as the lead part, the accompaniment, the bass, and the rhythm. And of course, we're going back to the lecture notes that we had talked about before, you know, looking at all the parts where the certain frequency ranges typically live within those parts. And hopefully that really helps us, you know, push our productions over the top. So to get started on our first DAW assignment, let's open up Logic. In my case, I've got Logic here located on the bottom. And as I open it up, we're going to just see our new track dialog box. Now I might just pick a software instrument very quickly, just pick a track, no big deal. And as this opens up, you'll see, we'll just go up to our loop bin up here on the top corner and click on that loop bin. And we'll be able to see all of the loops that we've got located here. For those that are working in GarageBand, you've got that set. FL Studio is very similar if you're working in Digital Performer. Uh, Pro Tools, they also have loops that are built in, but you know it's in a little bit different spot. Um, at the same token, as far as your loop bank here in Logic, it's very easy to go through, as you could see, and, and some of the other lectures that we had uh, talked about. The blue are audio loops, and the green are MIDI loops. So all we really need to do is, is just simply drag and drop. And so if I'm looking for a lead part, we could go through here, and as you can see, I've got 22,996 loops. In the summer class like this, or in a class, you know, in the fall, for example, when you're in the lab, you know, you, you may not potentially be able to have that much time to go through these and so maybe some of the things like for example you know when this becomes your job we're gonna have to move a little bit quicker right so maybe I could go to an instrument and I might be able to find certain instruments that could help me with my lead parts you can see here I've got a bunch we've got our percussion aspects we've got piano synth parts that might you know have a lead that we might be looking for but as far as you know lead synth parts we're gonna see a lot of this here another thing that we could do is, is find descriptors process, dry, grooving, clean, acoustic, relaxed, cheerful, dark. Um, that might potentially help. And then, you know, some may be in a you know, particular genre. So if you're looking into deep house, or if you're looking for funk or something like that, maybe this could really help us push the bar on our track. So I'll just pick deep house and we'll see all of these tracks that are located within deep house or the genre of deep house. Um, at the same token, you know, looking for lead parts, accompaniment parts, bass parts, there's no rule to this. You pick what you pick. I'm not going to tell you what to pick. Um, that's kind of part of the artistry. You know, as a producer, you pick what you think sounds right and we'll organize it. But let me just kind of show you how this works and, and the simple aspect of this. So, you know, sometimes, you know, you might start, you know, very, very few of us, I, I typically don't start with the lead line. What I might start with is, is maybe, you know, a rhythm part. So let's just go through here and see if we can't find a nice rhythm. And again, I'm going to be working quickly I do have one that I had put a lot of time into on the other side, so I'll show you know what happens when we finish this up. But in the tutorial here, I'll just you know quickly find something. So as you see here, I've got a nice little beat, and that's of course going to potentially be you know rhythm. But we're going to audition it and see what what happens here. So if I click on it here, you're going to hear the beat roll through. I want to audition anything else I just simply click on another one so let's just say we're happy with that it really is as easy as drag and drop so going back to our notes that we had just talked about if we look at our bars and our beats up here and I'm just gonna zoom in so I can see exactly the number you can see that that hook that beat is two measures now if I wanted to extend that, I could by dragging it up on the top and we can extend that out. Now in the case of our project, our project needs to be 16 bars long. So extend that out to 16. Now you've got your drum beat at 16 bars long. It'll play all the way through. Let's say for example, if you wanted to audition that or loop that, let's just go up to our cycle or our loop function up on the top and you see how that turns yellow. And then I'll just drag that out up on the top to 16. If you note here, up on the top, it's cut in half. That's going to be the loop area. And on the bottom, it will get us to our toggle. And then we can move that around as well. So very simple subtleties, but at the same time, very, very powerful. 
Now I get back to the beginning. Now we've got this beat happening. Now one of the things that we like to point out, and, and again this isn't a, a rule, it's just simply to help you, but one of the things we want to make sure is, is that you clone your loops. And so as we were talking here, just make sure that I hit Control L, which will turn all of these loops back. So as you remember, you know, let me just undo, but I'm converting these loops with Control L. Right? So another way to look at that, of course, is converting the loops in the edit area, and I can convert the loops to regions in the same spot. It's exactly the same thing, it's just simply a hotkey. So Control L will allow us to be able to do that. Now, I want to make sure that you note all the ways to, you know, add different uh, regions. And so in this case, if I just simply want to duplicate, I could hit Command R, which is going to replicate, right? Another way that we could do it is I could Option drag. So if I click on the region and hold down Option, you see that little green plus, and I can Option drag that through. Now. As far as dragging it out, I find that that's very quick. Just make sure that when you do drag this out, as you can see here, as I've got what I've got, I'm very, very cautious making sure that we've got everything perfect in terms of making sure you've cloned that loop. And so just make sure it's all highlighted, control L, and we've got ourselves set. So now we have exactly 16 bars. And so that's essentially what we're looking for. And now we've got a rhythm part taken care of. It, it really is that easy. You know, we're not looking for too much in this particular case. This is just the beginning. But as we play this through, we note that those 16 bars will work. Everything is set. And another thing that I like to point out as well is this is we've made these edits. It's really important to be very careful because it's easy to get across the time. And then maybe potentially our beat could be a little funky at that point, right? If we're not careful about where we place what we're doing. And so just make sure that you're always right on the bar and the beat. Very, very, very important. As you can see here, I've just opened up a can of worms on my own. There we go. And now we're hopefully back. I'm just going to kind of redo it here just so I got it perfect. Same thing. I'm highlighting that side. Command R to replicate right next to it. We've got a perfect edit. Done deal. Now let's look for a baseline, maybe potentially. So as I come through here, I've got that commercial beat set. Now let's just see what we've got in the genre of deep house for a baseline. So we've got this bombastic baseline or the bliss abyss, you know. Go through. I kind of like that, but obviously you pick what you pick, whatever you feel is right. So I've got this bombastic line. I'm going to put this in. I'm going to have that work along with the drum. Now let's say, for example, I just wanted to audition just this little small, these small two bar beats. Make sure that everything is set and perfect before we drag it out. I could just simply just pick the first two measures. Let's say we like it. Well, you could option drag over if you wanted to, to get that side, of course. We could replicate, command R, and we're gonna duplicate that out. Or we could drag from the top and then drag that out to our 16 bars. However you decide to do it, it's totally up to you. Just remember that we are always cloning those loops. So I'm gonna command L, and now I've got everything perfectly set, right? now. Let's just roll through, and again, you know, very quickly, you're going to put a lot more time into this than I am as of right now. I'm just, you know, getting us started so that we've got everything set. Um, as we have it rolling, we've got these two tracks. If I wanted to mix any of these two tracks, let's say, for example, the drums. I want to bring the drums back. As you can see here, I could turn it back here, or I've got my inspector set where I could actually turn it down on the other side. So as I'm highlighted over the top of this guy here, right, my inspector button is going to allow us to be able to see the track as I highlight on the track. So clicking on that baseline now, we've got that guy set. And noting here too, you see how it's got the name as I drag that in? Now if you wanted to change the name, I highly suggest doing it. Just simply double click on the name, and in this particular case, we could just call it Rhythm. Now the bass line, we could just double click on that bass line and we could call that bass. There you go. Done deal. 
Now, let's see if we can't find an accompaniment. Now, this isn't going to be a lead, of course. This is going to be something more in the, the mids, you know, maybe some type of a pad, something like that. Let's see what we can find. And again, you know, I'm, I'm just kind of rolling through this very quickly, so it may not, uh, it may not, you know, work out and we can all laugh. But let's just see what we've got here. I think we have our winner. So I've got our accompaniment and we've got something kind of in the mid range there. You can kind of hear that house piano happening. We've got a little bit of a string happening within that loop as I drag and drop that guy. I'm going to basically listen to these first two bars and let's just see what we've got here. <laughs> Not bad. So maybe what we could do now is just make sure we turn this back to where we want it. Another thing that we want to look at, of course, is, is that you notice how everything is panned right in the middle as you're listening to this in headphones or, or a stereo field. We may want to pan one side off on the other. So in this case, I might just pan this a little bit to the left. We want to take away from masking so that, you know, certain things that are in similar frequencies, you know, they, they won't uh, have them, you know, skewed or, or lost in the mix. And so in this case, I'm just going to kind of pan this off a little bit. Now we should have this nice little you know house layer i'm going to drag this over again remembering that as i've done that it is highlighted so i've got to go back and i've got to convert that loop Control l now they're all converted and we're good to go so it's going to come in really handy at some point too because there's going to be a time where you may want to just take one out right so that'll do the trick now as we've got that set pretty easy Now what we need to look for now is to try to find the quintessential lead line. We find something that sits right over the top of it. Maybe potentially a, a nice, you know, synth pad, something. But look at there, we've got a synth lead, maybe that might work. Now here is my disclaimer on this. Remember we're talking about frequency and we're also talking about pitch. If you look here on the right hand side, you've got certain aspects in the same key. That's really nice, that helps you out. There are times when you're dragging and dropping loops, you will not have access to a key. Unless, of course, you're using a MIDI loop. If you're using a MIDI loop, you can change to any key that you want to. And so in this case, you notice how all of these are set. These are analog loops. But if we were to find a MIDI loop, for example, and in this case, Deep House doesn't have a lot of those MIDI loops, but if we had one, we could change the pitch, we could move the note, we could do anything we want. So in a lot of cases, sometimes many of us look at MIDI as, as really, really nice because it, we can, you know, hi, you know, highly customize it. But in this case, we're just kind of, you know, kind of come through here and just to see what we can find, looking for just a nice little, you know, lead line maybe potentially that will work with everything. But always remembering that when we're creating these frequencies and pitches, we've got to make sure that the bass and the house call layer, in this case our accompaniment, are in the same key and they have the same melody lines or it is going to sound pretty funky. So some of you will find that it's going to take a little bit of editing to make this work. So let's talk about that real quick and let's find this lead line as it happens. And I think that you'll find it's not going to happen as easily as, as we want. It won't be right away. But as you search, you're going to find that it's going to be really, really beautiful when you get it right on. Let's find our lead. So you can hear right away, the, the second one that I picked is just kind of all over the place. But the first one we picked kind of worked really, really nice. Now we got kind of lucky, didn't we? Let's just see, we'll keep rolling through a couple more and then we'll see what we can find. But at the same time, I think we may potentially have gotten lucky and found what we're looking for. Now, 
don't know about you, but that one is really nice. Luminous Dreams Synth Lead. So I'm going to use that instead. And as you can see in the key of A, I'm going to drag that in. We know it works because we auditioned it. And look at there. That loop is a little bit longer. So you see here, that's a four bar loop, four measures. So I really only have to drag that out a couple more times to get to our 16 bars. All right, here you go. So now I've got everything set, everything populated. Let's make sure that we control L to make sure that we convert our loops to regions. And we've got everything rolling. Now let's check it out. I'm going to set it up on the top. I'm going to loop it so that we can play it back perfectly within our 16 bars. And let's see what we have. So again, going back to our notes, we've got four, tra four tracks that are clearly labeled. And let me just kind of finish that very quickly. We'll want to call this accompaniment. And let's get this guy, and we're just going to simply call this lead. And of course, this is just simply help us, and most importantly, to make sure that you note how this rolls. Now, if you wanted to, you could come up here and you could delete this. I'm just highlighting this, and I'm hitting the delete key, and then we're losing the track that we didn't necessarily need when we opened up our, our um, new track window. So now we've got a rhythm, our bass, accompaniment, and our lead. And let's play it back, see what we've got. All the loops are cloned. There's only one loop per track, of course. They're in their appropriate pitch range for their parts. The percussive type sounds are in the rhythm part, of course, right? And the bass is in the bass part, leads in the lead part, and accompaniments in the company part. So we're making sure that we're also not masking. And so one of the main things, of course, is that we've panned things out. So I'm taking my lead line and I'm going to pan it to the right. And I'm going to take my accompaniment and I'm going to pan it to the left. If I highlight the track, you can see the pan is working perfectly. And also the fader or the volume is also set to each individual track. Really, really quite simple. And if you wanted to push even further, you could insert in the audio effect region certain fun stuff. Just try things, see what happens. There are no rules. The most important thing that we've got though is, is that you populated your regions with four tracks. It's really that easy. So let me play this back for you and let's see what we got. <laughs> Perfect loop, all the edits are great, everything's been auditioned, and as you can see here, the lead line, and with that exception, is the only one that we've got set. Now, let's say, for example, inside this lead line, you may want to you know, do some of these more intricate edits. You may want to go inside some of these loops. There may be just one little part that you don't want in there. That's where we get into our editing tools. And so just remember, when we look up here in our toolbox up at the top, we've got our pointer tool. The pointer tool is already set, as you can see here, right? And I can point to anything that I want. I can click on it, whatever I need to do. But always remember that in order to use the marquee tool or this toolbox, you know, maybe the fade, whatever you want to do, on that second side of the toolbox, you have to hit command in the edit window. You notice how now you've got that little plus? So now maybe what I could do is come in here and just cut out certain parts to that lead line. For whatever reason, maybe that's just got some weird funkiness that I don't like. I can lose anything that I want, anywhere that I want. I just hit command and roll into it. Let's say, for example, if I wanted to see it a little bit closer, I just come in here, zoom in as close as I could see it. And we're talking about being able to see each individual transient. Look at there. So now I could really, really fine tune things. Maybe this little pop or something like that is something that we don't want in that lead we could lose it the sky's the limit as far as your edits are concerned but take it from me of course for the most part you're going to find that these loops are set up really really nice you're not going to need to do too much to them they're going to sound wonderful but also remember that it's going to be wise for you to do some of these edits because you're going, you're going to want to customize your tracks a little bit too in the future you as producers and as professionals you don't want to use the same loops that everyone else is using too that you know poses the risk of, of using similar loops as other people 
maybe potentially having a track that sounds the same. And, uh, you know, we always want to sound, uh, you know, exclusive. We, we want to, you know, be unique. And at the same token, um, using the same loops potentially could, uh, could be somewhat dangerous. So just be careful as we're dragging and dropping, maybe potentially as we organize what we organize, um, if we use too many of, of like, let's say, for example, some of these lead lines, and if we don't customize it, if we don't change it in, in a subtle way, we may you know, run the risk of, of doing similar things to other people. So I would be very cautious about that. You know, when I'm dragging and dropping loops, I, I really do want to try to be as, as unique as possible if, if that helps you in the future for your productions. But what we've got here hopefully will help. Now, the main thing, of course, is, is that uh, it's really easy as far as, you know, getting everything together. The production that we've just talked about here, I mean, there's really, you know, nothing to it. Of course, most important, if you have any questions or anything like that, please let me know. But remembering, too, that you always have access to your Logic book. Up here at Help on the top, that is actually Logic's manual. And so if you go in here, you'll be able to find every little thing that, that you might potentially be looking for. So if there's something that we hadn't covered or, or talked about yet and you might want to push the bar a little bit further, feel free to look. But at the same token, as you can see here in this first track, we're not looking for much. 16 bars long. Everything has been named. We've got all that set. Bass part, lead part, accompaniment is all set. We have eliminated masking. I've panned just a little bit. I've set my my volume label, you know, basically level set. So that hopefully the rhythm is a little bit back. The bass is a little bit forward, potentially, just to keep the balance on this particular track, of course. And most importantly, when we're all said and done, what I say to you is, is just to make sure that you can save it. And as you can see here where it says untitled, we haven't saved what we've just done. Each track that we create, to me, it's 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 like a baby in itself. We, we definitely want to take care of it. I promise you in the future, somebody's going to ask you, you know, what you do, and you're going to you're going to want to have a lot of different projects to show them. Um, many times, you know, they're going to use 10, 15 different ones and they're going to use small sections of them. Um, you'd be surprised. And there's a lot of money in television and film for background cues. And so just make sure that you've got these saved and you always know where they're at. So in this case, what I'm going to do is just, just save the project and we'll hit save. And it's going to ask us in this case, then what we want to call it. So we're going to call it the DAW project one. and you can save it to the desktop or wherever you decide that you want to save it. Now what I would suggest to you is, is to make sure that you organize it as a folder and make sure that everything is checked. What many of you are going to see is something that looks like this. And you're going to be working with every aspect of your project. And so just make sure that as you're working with logic, you're working, excuse me, you're working with every aspect of logic in your project. And so you've got samplers, alchemy, ultra beats, space designer, movie files. At some point you're going to be using these. So just as you get started, make sure that you've got everything checked and you should be good to go. And then make sure that also, too, that you've got that set to folder. Package will also save everything, of course, but at the same token, it's just going to put the one icon on your desktop. The folder will, you know, obviously be a folder in itself. So once we have this done and we've got it all saved up and we call it what we want, we can go back and we can close this out. And you'll see here we've got our DAW project there, the one that we just created in the folder. So as you see the folder, and if I double click on the folder, I've got my audio files, we've got a project, you know, the icon, freeze files, everything that we create will be located in this folder. And so just to get back to the project, then again, playing her back. Remember, if I hit command two, I can get to the mixer and I've got a free floating mixer. We can see all the panning and everything else with the stereo outs. And we can have a lot of fun in that sense too. So we've got everything saved. We've got everything set the way that I would like it set. Now, how are you going to prove to me that you've done what you've done? Just simply take a screenshot. So let's just lose the inspector window, get all of this set. And what I see here, then simply hit Command Shift 4, which is a screenshot, Command Shift 4. And you'll see that little picture show up. And then take a picture of what you've done. I'll be able to see the regions. I'll be able to see all of the edits that you've created, and there's that picture that we just set. That will tell me everything. And from that point, you'll be good to go, and it'll be your first 10 points. You'll have all of your quizzes under your belt. It's gonna be as, as easy as you could imagine, right? So, now, you may want to have this where you could play it back in your car. Let's just do that real quick. Now, again, you don't need to do this for me yet, but you will be doing this in the future, so I think it's wise to look at this. 
I could just simply go to bounce and file and we're going to bounce the project or section. So as we see this, you know, prompt here, what you're going to see is this PCM is going to be pulse code modulation and this is going to be your uncompressed file. This is probably where, you know, if somebody's looking for the ultimate resolution, that's probably where you're going to create your bounce. And so I would just highly suggest in this case, you know, just giving you just, a, you know, hypotheticals. When you bounce something, you're going to have a start time and our end time. We note that it's 16 bars, so that makes a lot of sense, 1 to 17. So then that means that, of course, it's going to go through the full duration of those 16 bars. Um, the same thing, your file format. Wave or AIFF, or these are going to be your uncompressed file formats. I would have it at 24-bit and your sample rate at 44.1, so you could play it back on a CD player or something like that. Now in the class, what you're going to be turning into us, just simply based on file size, is going to be an MP3 or an MP4. So as we highlight the MP3, let me just give you some settings here. Open up your setting to the ultimate resolution, 320 kilobits per second. And in this case, then, you'll be able to use the best encoding. Let's not filter out our frequency. And I think that if I was to just leave this as of right here, you'll be able to use this, you know, for a lot of your bounces. And, you know, at the same token, obviously, um, when it comes down to quality, the most important thing to note as far as your quality is an MP3 or an MP4. That's a representation of what the pulse code modulated file is. So think of this PCM as high definition. And think of the MP3 as like a YouTube clip video or something like that with a lower resolution. But in terms of our audio, the MP3 is what you're going to send to me. I'll be able to hear it you know, perfectly fine, of course. But in the future, as you work as professionals, what you'll be sending into studios and to television and, and film directors is typically a WAV or an AIFF file at 24-bit, 44.1. Hopefully that helps. And so as I hit OK now, I can create an MP3 or, you know, a PCM. I'll just create an MP3. Let's hit OK. It's going to ask us also where we want to direct it. So I'm going to direct it to the desktop, and we're going to call this our DAW Project 1 MP3. And we're going to bounce her down. Now I'll be able to hear that MP3 and all of its goodness. And we can play it in our car, wherever we want to play it. So here's our DAW Project MP3. <laughs> Now remember, what you're turning into me is the screenshot. So simply just upload the screenshot that we just took, Command Shift 4, and you'll have it right there. And this is how we'll treat our first DAW project one. Make sure we get it set. Um, this is 10 points. You don't want to have a zero on anything, of course, right? Thanks again, guys. Let me know if you need anything, if you've got any questions. Take care, everybody.